When we think about the word aim, it generally means the goal we set out to achieve. For example, if you want to complete a marathon, your aim is to finish the race. In everyday life, we set aims for many reasons. To achieve personal goals, succeed in projects, or complete tasks. These aims guide us in the direction we want to go, keeping us focused and on track. In the military, however, the term aim has a much more specific and critical role. In military planning, an aim is the central objective of an operation or battle, chosen carefully to align with a larger mission. This isn't just a target, but a purpose that will ideally lead to a decisive outcome, such as capturing a strategic location, crippling enemy forces, or defending a key area. Selecting the right aim is crucial. It can mean the difference between victory and defeat. In World War II, Adolf Hitler set his sights on Stalingrad for symbolic and political reasons, rather than strictly strategic ones. Stalingrad was not an essential military objective, but capturing it would have been a psychological victory over the Soviet Union. However, this aim diverted German resources from more critical objectives, like securing oil fields in the Caucasus. The German forces were eventually surrounded and defeated in Stalingrad, leading to a major turning point in the war and marking the beginning of Germany's defeat on the Eastern Front. Hitler's misplaced aim cost the German army valuable time, resources, and soldiers. Allied forces chose a very clear aim for D-Day, establish a strong foothold in France to begin the liberation of Western Europe from Nazi control. This aim was straightforward and connected to a larger strategy of pushing German forces out of occupied Europe. The focus on securing key beaches and surrounding areas helped the Allies to achieve their goal, as each part of the operation was designed to support this central aim. This clarity and focus helped make the Normandy invasion one of the most successful operations of World War II. During the American Civil War, Confederate General Robert E. Lee's aim at Gettysburg was not entirely clear, leading to confusion and a costly defeat. His hope was to achieve a major victory on northern soil, possibly forcing the Union into peace negotiations. However, Lee's aim was not aligned with any specific achievable objective and his attack decisions, such as Pickett's charge, ended disastrously. This loss at Gettysburg halted Lee's campaign and marked a turning point in the war in favor of the Union. In each of these cases, the choice of aim had a powerful impact on the outcome of the battle. The battles at Stalingrad and Gettysburg highlight how an unclear or poorly chosen aim can lead to disaster, while the Normandy invasion illustrates the effectiveness of a focused and realistic aim. While it might seem simple to choose a goal in theory, selecting and maintaining an aim in the chaos of war is incredibly challenging. In a crisis, the fog of war, a term that describes the confusion and lack of clear information in battle, is a major obstacle. Commanders rarely have a complete picture of the enemy's position, strength, or plans. This uncertainty makes it hard to predict what will happen and can even disrupt well-thought-out plans. A single unexpected enemy move can throw off an entire operation. War is dynamic and battles rarely go as planned. Commanders may have to revise or even completely change their aim to adapt to shifting battlefield conditions. For instance, if an unexpected attack puts key resources at risk, a commander might have to abandon the original aim to protect those resources, altering the course of the battle. Military aims are often influenced by political or strategic goals which can complicate decision-making. For example, a political leader might prioritize capturing a symbolic location, while military advisors might see a different objective as more strategically sound. Balancing these different perspectives is a challenging task for military planners and can lead to confusion or divided efforts. The chosen aim must be realistic given the resources available. Military planners have to consider whether they have the manpower, equipment, and supplies necessary to achieve their aim. Overreaching or aiming for something unrealistic with limited resources often leads to failure, as seen with Japan's rapid expansion in the Pacific during World War II, which left it stretched too thin and vulnerable to counterattack. To handle these challenges, military leaders undergo extensive training design to help them anticipate outcomes, set effective aims, and adjust them when necessary. They learn from history, using past battles as lessons in what makes for a successful or unsuccessful aim.
War games and simulations provide opportunities to practice these skills in controlled environments, where they can test various scenarios and learn to respond to rapidly changing conditions. Modern technology also aids in aim selection. Advanced surveillance tools, predictive analytics, and artificial intelligence can help commanders gather and analyze information quickly, reducing some of the uncertainty on the battlefield and providing clearer insights to guide decision-making. Setting a military aim is far more complex than it might appear. It requires careful planning, foresight, and the flexibility to adapt as conditions change. History shows us that battles can be won or lost based on the choice of aim, and choosing the right one is rarely easy. Military leaders must balance political, strategic, and logistical considerations to set a realistic and effective aim. Through rigorous training and the use of modern technology, military planners improve their ability to set aims that are clear, achievable, and aligned with the mission, even in the unpredictable and chaotic environment of war.